bring out the sphenoid, the keystone of the cranium. So here you are looking at the front of the sphenoid. So you may notice there is a beak. I'll tip it so you can see. There is a beak that sits on the front of the sphenoid. And then we have the left and right greater wings of the sphenoid. There you can see a little more clearly. We've got the left and right greater wings. If you look down on the top from above, you can see the lesser wings of the sphenoid. And then on the bottom aspect of the sphenoid, you have the left and right pteroid processes. And the pteroid processes have, there is a lateral pterygoid process and a medial pterygoid process. And the an interesting thing to know about the pterygoid processes, the medial pterygoid processes are the anchors for the soft tissue of the soft palate. So the medial pterygoid processes anchor the soft palate. And you can orient to that just to feel in your own mouth, the roof of your mouth, the hard palate, and continue back. You'll see at the very back of the hard palate are the horizontal plates of the palatines, which we'll look at in just a minute. And then there's the soft palate. Now I want you, you can actually feel in your own roof of your mouth, you can feel the nubs, the hamulus of the medial pterygoid process so if you were to have your tongue run it along the surfaces of your upper teeth, and then once you go back to about, you know, where if you don't have your wisdom teeth, continue back, and then go medially just before, right at the end of the hard palate, go medially, and you'll feel a little nub on the left and right sides of the roof of your mouth, just where the soft palate begins. And those nubs are the hamulus of your medial pterygoids of your sphenoid. And what you will most likely notice, because we are beautifully asymmetrical, you may notice that there's one hamulus sitting a little bit lower than the other or you may notice there's one sitting a little more posterior than the other, or any combination thereof. Because the sphenoid is responding to the articulations, the other bones that it meets up with. It's also responding to the forces being placed upon it soft tissue-wise. So the odds of it being symmetrical, as I said, are slim to none. And it also knits together over time. So at birth, this bone is not yet completely in one unified piece. There are actually multiple pieces to it that knit together over time, just like we saw with the frontal bone. And in fact, a lot of the bones of the cranium are that way. So that's your lateral and medial pterygoid processes. Now I want you, you're looking now at the posterior surface of the sphenoid. And I want to show you, the. you're looking at the inside of the greater wings. And one thing I want to point out to you is the curve. How much those greater wings curve back. They actually make up the temples of, of the face. So these greater wings reach out and underneath the soft tissue of the temples, which is actually a fair amount of soft tissue that overlies them, underneath the temples is the greater wings of the sphenoid. So now you're looking anteriorly. I want to come back to the posterior view because I want to point out to you that the greater wings, the inner surface of the greater wings is where the anterior tips of the temporal lobes rest.
and I'll show you that in more detail when we look at the brain video but just to give you an orientation with the bone the other thing I want to point out to you with the temporal bone or with the sphenoid is the cella turcica and there you can see the curve of the cella turcica, the Turk's saddle and that is where the pituitary gland sits so now let's give you an, another angle view so looking from above you can see the cella turcica just behind the lesser wings of the sphenoid and that's where the pituitary gland sits and is gently rocked. Now we also have an aspect of the sphenoid known as the dorsum cellae. The dorsum cellae is essentially the back of the cella turcica. And let's see if I can get a better angle for you to view it. There. Okay, so that's the dorsum cellae.